<laughs> I'm getting a little too old and too cute. <laughs> um, it, it is wonderful to be with all of you tonight. And uh, I will not uh, spoil a great show with a long speech. Um, <laughs> but I, I do have a few things to say. <laughs> You know, I was reflecting back on my last campaign and the 2008 election. And, you know, a lot has changed uh, since then. Um, I am uh, a little grayer. <laughs> my, my daughters say uh, it makes me look distinguished. And Michelle says it makes me look old. <laughs> But I think back to that uh, day in Grant Park yeah. on election day and, 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 and speaking to the American people and, and trying to absorb this uh, incredible honor. And I said to so many of you that as special as this night was, this was not the end. This was just the beginning. decided to run for president because I thought the gap had grown too large between the country we know we can be and the country as it was. We'd gone through a decade in which incomes and wages for ordinary people had actually gone down. We had gone through a decade that had seen a hemorrhaging of manufacturing in this country. We had gone through a decade in which the costs of everything from health care to college tuition to gas were going up, and too many families were just treading water. We had gone through a decade of two wars, a diminished respect for America around the world. We had kicked the can down the road for too long on critical issues like having an energy policy that would allow us to free ourselves from our dependence on foreign oil and would allow us to clean up the environment and make sure that the new jobs of the future were created right here in the United States of America. So we knew that we had a lot of work to do. We knew that we had a steep hill to climb. Now it turned out that the hill was even steeper than we thought. <laughs> Because what we didn't know fully at the time, what we didn't fully appreciate was that we were already in the midst of the worst recession since the Great Depression. We had lost four million jobs before I was even sworn in. We'd lose another four million in the few months right after my, uh, my inauguration. And so all the hardships that families had been feeling, the fact that they felt as if the American dream was slipping away from them, all those problems were compounded by this incredible crisis. And so I had to make a series of decisions very quickly. And they were big and often tough decisions. We had to make sure that we yanked the economy back from the brink of a Great Depression. We had to make sure that we stabilized the financial system so that we didn't have a full meltdown and so that businesses could get financing and keep their doors open and keep their employees uh, and, and make payroll. We had to save an auto industry. I, I didn't anticipate being a CEO of a, of a, of a couple of auto companies, but, but we had to make sure that we saved those iconic companies from liquidation because a million jobs depended on them. And of those decisions, all of which were hard, all of which were controversial, many of which were not popular, we were able to, to bring the economy back from the brink. And we were able to stabilize the financial system. An economy that was shrinking by 6% a year began growing again. An economy that was shedding 
hundreds of thousands of jobs, has now, over the last 15 months, created more than 2 million jobs in the private sector alone. And along the way, we made extraordinary progress on the commitments that I made to the American people and commitments we made to each other during the campaign. So we passed health care. So that and we passed financial reform to make sure that consumers aren't cheated and we don't see taxpayer bailouts for the financial system again. And we passed equal pay for equal work because we thought that was the right thing to do. And we ended Don't Ask, Don't Tell so that anybody can show up. national service for young people so they could participate and contribute into the building of America. We made the largest investment in clean energy in our history and the largest investment in education. And, uh, we changed the student loan system so we were going to give billions of dollars to banks and we were giving them directly to students. And overseas, we brought down, we brought back a hundred thousand troops out of Iraq. And we ended the combat mission there. And, and, and because of the extraordinary diplomacy of our Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and all the great work that's been done, we were able to help restore a sense of standing and a sense of purpose uh, around the world. And so. The, the, the track record of the last two and a half years is one that I could, could not be proud of. And we couldn't have accomplished it because of you. We could not have accomplished it without a you. But what is also true is we've got so much work left to do. Because there are still millions of people across the country who are hurt. I hear from them every day. People who send out 60, 30, 50 resumes and haven't gotten an answer back and are starting to feel like they'll never find a job again. People who've lost their homes. People who've seen their small business and their life savings lost in the crisis. And some of the big projects that we set for ourselves during the campaign have not yet been done. We still don't have an energy policy that is suitable for the 21st century. We still have to invest in clean energy that, so that solar panels and, and wind turbines are, are built right here in this country. Electric cars are built right here in this country. And we are focused not on the energy sources of the past, but the energy sources of the future. We still have that project to deal with climate change in a serious way. Those things haven't changed. We still have so much more work to do on education. We have made great strides, but we have to hit the goal that I've set, that once again we will have the highest proportion of college graduates of any country in the world, and every single young person is willing to apply themselves to afford to go to college without taking on hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. That is still something we've still got to implement health care reform because there are a whole bunch of folks who want to undo what we've accomplished. We have not yet gotten immigration reform done, and we are a nation of immigrants as well as a nation of laws. wants to come here and become a part of the fabric of the society, that they have fair and legal and orderly ways that they can, that they can legally immigrate to this country. 